Um, reported numbers were very strong, up 30% on revenue, 115% EBITDA, and as you said, over fivefold on uh, PBT. But that was uh, very largely on account of the wine transaction. If you adjust for that, uh, revenues were broadly fat. But that then also needs to take account of what we saw as very healthy growth in the large biosimilars business uh, on a like for like basis, 11%. Offsetting transient degrowth in our services business, Synergy of 2% and uh, generics business um, of 6%. Uh, Peter, given uh, the earnings that you've delivered this quarter around, what is it that we can look forward to going forward? Because now you have biosimilars contributing 60% nearly of uh, the revenue mix, to the revenue mix rather. And so uh, is that concentration likely to go up or are we going to be looking at more... Uh, more segmentation and more diversification, perhaps. No, I, I, I think you'll you'll broadly see the segmentation be stable, and we're looking for growth on all three of, of, of these business verticals in the second half of the year. We've seen a, a somewhat subdued start on a basis. We see that playing into the second quarter. But then we see a very clear transition toward accelerated growth in the second half driven in the significant biosimilars business by um, continued traction that we're seeing in the business there, market shares going up in America, stable in Europe and good growth in the emerging markets. In the generics business, we're launching a number of new formations and APIs in the second half. And very excitingly, uh, that includes our generic liraglutide, the GLP to play into the very uh, significantly emerging diabetes and obesity market. And in our services business, we see return to growth driven, both by a return to investment from US VCs in the biotech sector, which has lagged in the last two years, but very clearly return to investment there will play through in the next quarters. Uh, underlying business, um, it, particularly in biomanufacturing, is, is building momentum. And we're seeing uh, a heightened interest and in level of inquiries resulting uh, from sort of companies looking to change their position vis-a-vis -vis investing in China with Biosecure Act. So fundamentals on all three, this is returning toward accelerated growth in the second half. Right. And what about Sinjin? Because many analysts believe uh, that uh, that business, that acquisition of yours is expected to turn headwinds into tailwinds uh, by the second half. So what kind of contribution do you see from that business? In, in, in Sinjin, we, we certainly see that the, the, the current headwind, which is primarily related, as I've said, to uh, what we've seen as a slowdown the last two years in capital funding into the biotech sector, which then feeds through into the research sector. Uh, that has slowed down, been impacted in the last two quarters, but already we very clearly see the green shoots of recovery there. Funding has returned. Um, our level of RFPs, request for proposals, is at a four-year high, um, and we expect that to play through in the next couple of quarters. We also have tailwinds emerging from the Biosecure Act, where we see a, a very sort of significant uptick in inquiries in companies looking to rebalance their exposure to, to China as a consequence of the Biosecure Act. And Sinjin is very well placed to capitalize on that.